My friends, I have finally hit the 100,000 mile mark in my 2019 Ram Promaster camper van. I bought this thing in October 2019. A few weeks later, I drove it to Colorado Springs, got it all built out by Wayfarer vans, and I've been racking up the miles ever since. I have been making videos about my van from the very beginning. I've documented every step all along the way. And I think this is gonna be the final video. I don't plan on selling the van anytime soon, but if someone was to offer me one cool cold Bitcoin, I would take it in an instant. Hit me up! <laughs> so how about we do a 100,000 mile review, the pros, the cons, the greatest hits, and the biggest regrets. So first, let's start with the positives. This van absolutely changed my life. Right after I got the van, I set sail, I set, uh, I set wheel on the greatest road trip of a lifetime, the 50 state shred. I took this van to every single one of the lower 48 states. It was an epic adventure, an epic journey, especially during all the COVID stuff where I was actually able to sleep in my van, stay in my little bubble, and not have to interact with too many people along the way. But just before the lockdowns and everything going crazy, I rode in Georgia with my buddy Brian and my buddy Dan, and they brought along their friend, Sarah. That was truly a life-changing day. I met the woman of my dreams. It would have never happened without this van. So before I get into the camper of the van, let's talk about the vehicle, the Ram Promaster. My favorite part about this van is that it's paid off. I fantasize about other vehicles all the time, but there is no way I'm going to make another thousand dollar a month deal with the devil. I'm gonna ride this thing into the sunset. You know, with other vehicles, I mostly just fantasize about going into the dealership to do a routine oil change, maybe a routine maintenance, and them not saying, you know, you're gonna need to do a little bit more. You know, this is just gonna be a thousand bucks. Trust us. We've got to flush your coolant. We gotta flush your power steering fluid. We gotta flush your fuel system. We gotta flush your transmission. Enough with the thousand dollar flushes. I am the fool that says yes to the dealer every time they bring something up because I want this van well taken care of. I don't want anything bad to happen. You know how far that got me? About 75,000 miles when my engine blew up and I had to do a full replacement for $17,000 out of pocket, no warranty, no nothing, just pain. That's almost as much as a new mountain bike. And if you've ever been to a Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, Cherokee dealership and you go and you look in the back and you see all the cars, they barely have enough room to park all the cars they have to work on. But I will say my buddy Alexander, the single track sampler, has not had any issues with his Ram Promaster van. I think he's got probably less miles on his van than I do on mine, but he also drives very nicely, much like a grandma, and uh, I don't drive so much like a grandma. Maybe I should. There are a lot of things about the van that just get me going, but there's only one thing that gets me going in the morning. The fine sponsor of today's video, AG1. The new year is upon us and it may sound cliche, but I have used this time to reset myself and get into better, healthier routines many times. AG1 has been a part of my morning routine for almost two years now. I can't even believe it. I love getting my fair share of 75 different vitamins and minerals, probiotics and adaptogens, all trusted by the world's best endurance athletes. If it's good enough for them, it's probably good enough for me. Hey, maybe you have a perfect diet, get perfect sleep, have great workouts, have perfect genetics, zero stress in your life, but that ain't me and I'm willing to bet that ain't you. We could all use a little supplemental help. Every morning after I play Wordle, I get up, I go to the fridge, I grab a scoop of AG1, I throw in a handful of ice cubes, it makes it taste so nice when it's cold and it mixes everything up. Oh, great way to start the day. AG1 is the most comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition available. It promotes gut health, supports immunity, boosts energy, and helps recovery. It would take so many different pills and potions to get all the goodness that's packed into just one scoop of AG1. I am 41 years old and I still feel pretty dang good. I wanna keep it that way for the next 60 years and I need all the help I can get to do that. 
head on over to drinkag1.com slash BKXC and you'll get five free travel packs and a year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 with your first order. It's not all complaints. I like the way this van handles. I like the way it drives. It's got plenty of power. I don't feel like I get bounced around when it's really windy. I can feel it, but I'm not getting knocked out of my lane any more than I am in any other car. I love the short wheelbase on this van. I feel like I can park in 90% of parking spots, no problem. It is very tall though, so you gotta watch out for trees when you're backing into a spot. I still love the gray color. I think it's just nice and subtle. It just looks cool. There was only four or five of these available in the entire country, and luckily one was in Portland. I could go drive up and get it. Fly up and get it. Me and my mom took a one-way flight and then we drove the van back down. One massive complaint that you will hear from every single ProMaster owner of this generation is that the headlights are bordering on criminal with how dim they are. If you are driving on a dark road at night, you're taking your life into your own hands. I'm a little older now, but my vision is still pretty good. But man, driving with these headlights at night is terrible. And you can't just pop out the bulbs and put in some LEDs. You have to actually like cut stuff out and glue stuff in to replace these headlights. Ugh. I put this whole brush guard on the front of the van just to get some really nice, bright, off-road only lights. These things have saved me from quite a few animal encounters when driving at night. So let's talk about the real star of the show, the Wayfair Vans camper van kit. Hey, I'm down here. <laughs> This is a prefabricated plug and play camper van kit designed specifically for the 136 wheelbase ProMaster. This is called the Walter kit from Wayfair Vans and it's pretty much 70% of the reason I went with the Ram ProMaster. I was completely sold on taking my brand new empty van to Colorado Springs, having them work on it for about four hours and driving out of that place with a brand new full on camper van. So about four years ago, the Walter kit was only about 9,000 bucks. Now it's 20,000 bucks. But still, if you think about the time, the effort, the energy, the materials, the master carpentry that goes into doing your entire camper van custom by yourself, I could not imagine taking on that project. I love doing construction projects. I hope to one day build my own house from scratch remodel my own house from scratch. <laughs> this kind of stuff is always twice as expensive and takes twice as long than you could ever imagine. So four years ago, the MSRP on this van was 35,000 bucks. The Wayfair kit was 9,000 bucks. You're basically getting a brand new camper van for $44,000 in a world of $100,000 camper vans. That was just crazy. But today, prices have gone up just a little bit. The Ram ProMaster is now base $50,000. The Walter kit from Wayfair Vans is $20,000. So now you're looking at $70,000, which is pretty good in a world of $140,000 vans. But that's all the new prices. There's still plenty of used options out there. This van is probably 19,000 bucks used without the camper van stuff inside of it. I don't know, if I was looking at things right now fresh and I only had a car and I was thinking about a van, I'd probably just stay in my car and do hotel rooms. But there is something so magical about the van, having the bikes stored away, locked away, having everything blocked off so nobody can see inside, being able to change after a mountain bike ride, wipe yourself down, being able to pull up on a really nice overlook and cook dinner, cook lunch, cook breakfast, sleep there. <sighs> you get tired on a long road trip, you just find a rest stop, you pull over, you sleep. It's just a really, really amazing experience once you get into it. And then of course things happen that aren't so magical. Did I ever tell you the story about getting a mouse inside the van? I was at Everstoke unloading my gear pretty late at night with the van doors open. And I felt like I had the van doors open a little too long. I am so paranoid about that stuff. So Sarah and I lay down to bed that night and all of a sudden I hear a mouse doing laps in the ceiling, just running around, scratching endlessly. We were just petrified, horrified, embarrassed. 
whatever emotion that is bad, we felt it. We tried to play some like owl and hawk sounds on YouTube to try to scare it out. Nothing doing. It took a full week for me to catch this thing in a mousetrap, finally got it, disposed of it, all was right with the world, and then I open up my van door the next day and a newborn baby mouse is just sitting there on the floor. So then of course you have to immediately Google how many pups are in a mouse litter? Anywhere from six to 12. So of course I had to tear out every single bit of insulation in the van, including the ceiling. I found a few mouse poops, but I did not find any other mouse babies. We haven't had any other mouse problems. I was not able to actually get the ceiling back up. So I've got my bare ceiling and no mice. Unrelated to the ceiling incident, I would say the Wayfarer kit is starting to show its age after four years with plenty of little nicks and dings and maybe some stuff I could clean up with a magic eraser. The upholstered pieces are still looking really nice though. My bed here is still going nice and strong. This is the original little mattress with three inches of foam or whatever, but it's perfectly fine for me. I just load up with a ton of blankets when it's going to be cold and I sleep great in this thing. One of the biggest quality of life improvements that I should have done and probably will not end up doing with the van is getting a window in this area, either on this side or on that side to make the airflow so much better with the max air fan. If you only have one vent fan, you basically have to roll down your front windows all the way to get real airflow going. But if you have a nice little hole or window in the side of your van, all that air getting pulled in when you're hot on a terrible, humid, hot summer night just comes right over the top of you and gets sucked out. It's the perfect setup. One thing I definitely don't regret is keeping the camper electrical setup away from the van electrical setup. I kept everything completely separate because back then I really did not know what I was doing. I just followed some tutorials online. Now I have a much better idea about electrical systems and all this other stuff. But still, if you're just starting out, if you're just building it, why intertwine everything and end up with your van not starting in the morning because you left something on all night? And if you are starting to plan out your van build, I implore you, use a portable power station. There are a bunch of different brands. They're all pretty dang good, but it's just such easy. Drop it in, plug and play power. I don't really see the benefit of doing a massive custom system with all of these different components. Okay, there are some pros, there are some cons, but just take my word for it. You can easily get a portable power station, plop it in, plug some solar in, and you're good to go. I did all that custom power component stuff when I first built my van because the portable power stations weren't up to snuff yet. There were only a couple out on the market and they were not as good as all the really nice systems that exist now. A little half and half regret no regret is upgrading the head unit in this vehicle to be able to use Apple CarPlay. That is an absolute game changer. But then you're trying to listen to a podcast and the stock system, the, the speakers are just so terrible. So I upgraded with an amp and new speakers and I spent so much time and money and it just doesn't sound that great. It sounds okay, but I am enough of an audiophile where I've heard nice things before. This ain't that nice. It's probably more of a tuning problem. I probably just need to take it to somebody who knows how to set the EQ and all that, and maybe they'll make it sound good, uh, but I kind of doubt it. Another truly regrettable thing for me personally, maybe other people don't have a problem with it, but this sink, I just hate it so much. The water jugs underneath just sit there for months. So I have to like pull out the water jugs, hit them with chlorine, make sure they're good. If I ever want to use this thing, I just wish I had better water tanks that are accessible from the outside. Cause then I feel like I could flush them easier. I could uh, fill them up easier. I could drain them easier. Having these big plastic jugs that are just filled with mold every couple months, it just stinks. I don't use that much water when I'm washing my dishes with a spray bottle and uh, spitting my toothpaste into the garbage can. No bathroom, no shower in the van, no regrets about that. Over the past four years, I've had a couple do or die situations, bathroom situations, but it all worked out in the end. 
but just for those two or three times, I, I don't want to have a whole big thing in here having to clean it and, and take the water in, take the water out, a shower that I never end up using. It's pretty good to be bare bones and minimalist. Not having a bigger fridge is a little bit of a regret. I don't know where I would exactly put it. I really like how my fridge right now is a little footstool for my workstation when I spin my driver's side chair around. But man, I didn't really think that I would need a fridge at all. That was very silly. I like keeping cool drinks in here on hot, humid days. And then with Sarah and me traveling around, she loves cooking. She would cook all kinds of amazing things and we would start to get limited by how much we would start cramming in this little fridge. So having a little bit bigger fridge would be pretty dang nice. One thing that's more of a live and learn than a regret is starting off with all of my tools in the back of the van. I had a giant toolbox that slid out. I had a bike stand. I had all this stuff. And eventually I pared it down to a really nice and cool Milwaukee packout system. But even that was too much. I ended up paring down all that stuff into three of these bins. And you know what? I just checked this bin today and it's all outdated <laughs> components that won't work with any of me or Sarah's bike. Me bike, that's not good uh, English. So yeah, I continue to free up quite a bit of space by paring things down, actually being honest. Am I going to use this? And now this whole section gets filled up with other camping gear, other Everstoke gear that is a little more critical. One thing that's become a little bit outdated and was a bit of an extravagance was the under van air compressor to fill up the van tires, to fill up mountain bike tires. Now you can get these like USB rechargeable air compressors that do quite a bit instead of having a whole thing under your van. I still like it. It's still worthwhile for me, but if you're starting from now, uh, just look on Amazon. There's a bunch of them. They're probably pretty good. And finally, a string of no regrets for all the little fun gadgets that I got for the van, all the things that kind of seem like, eh, do you really need it? And then 100,000 miles later, were so worth it. I love being able to glance down at my little altimeter to see how high I am in the mountains when I'm going through a pass. I love having a good cell phone holder. I had kind of a crappy one that was expensive and I put up with it for quite a while before I just went with a nice one that's a little cheaper but was way more functional. I love my rear view camera. If you have any kind of car where you can't see out the back, I don't understand why you don't have a rear view camera like this. It is so nice not to have to drive with the mirrors, use the camera out the back, and it's a dash cam and a rear cam, so if anything happens, maybe you'll be able to save yourself with insurance and be able to prove that it was the other person's fault. And my favorite thing in the whole van, my seatbelt extender that defeats the horrible chime that would go off when you don't have your seatbelt on in the van. I love a seatbelt. I think seatbelts are amazing. I wear my seatbelt almost always, but when I'm pulling through a campsite at two miles an hour to go 50 feet, I don't want to listen to the chime, enough with the chime, get a little seatbelt extender and eliminate it. So four years later, I am very, very glad I jumped in and got the van. I poo-pooed it for quite a long time. On paper, I never really thought it made sense. But when my Uncle Dennis died, it just kind of put life into perspective. That guy would go, go, go. He would experience every single day. He would squeeze every little bit of juice out of every day. He lived life to the fullest. And the van helped me do the same. Actually, in 2020, I was going to try to go to like every baseball stadium. That was also one of my things. But COVID happened and it didn't happen. The longer you live, the more you realize how fragile and short life is. If there's something out there you want to do, if there's a risk you want to take, if there's someone you love that you haven't told yet, just go out there and do it. Go for broke. What's the worst that could happen? You end up sleeping on your parents' couch for a couple years. No big deal. Easy for me to say, of course, but you know, if just one person takes that chance from watching this video, then I've impacted somebody and maybe there's a little butterfly effect involved in all of this. Oh yeah, this is a van regrets video. I didn't mean to go all philosophical, but sometimes it comes down to that, doesn't it? Do me a favor, go drive somewhere new, and maybe I'll see you on the road.